Good morning, Calvary. Pastor Chad here with your word for the day. It's Tuesday, and I hope that God is blessing you and, and will just continue to speak into your life. Uh, I'm, I'm sharing from Psalm 139 today. and In fact, I'm going to be sharing the next couple of, of uh, devotions that I share from Psalm 139. It's a beautiful psalm. It's got so much richness in it. I want to just kind of pause here and, and tell you what, what God says to me from this. Uh, but today, I, I want to begin just by asking you this question. Have you ever been forgotten? Have you ever been forgotten? Like, people forgot you. Like, when you were a child, did your parents ever forget to pick you up from someplace? Uh, you know, I was about eight years old, and, and I was at the Y, and, and my parents forgot to pick me up, and they always said, you need to be outside at whatever time, and, and don't be late, and we're not going to come in for you. And I remember sitting out there, sitting out there, sitting out there, sitting out there, sitting out there for hours, and the people from the Y would come out and say, are you okay? Do you want to come inside? Do you want to call? No, i got to stay right here for my parents. And they forgot me. And it felt so good when they showed up, but I, you know, I was terrified I'd been forgotten. Or as a teenager, were you ever forgotten? Like your friends forgot to invite you to a party or an event, and, and you heard about it later, and you just felt devastated because you weren't included or invited? Or how about as an adult? You know, your, your friends, or your thought they were your friends or your family, uh, they leave you out. They're going on a trip. They're having dinner. They're getting together, and they just forget to include you. See, none of us want to be forgotten. And it's a terrible feeling when we feel abandoned or alone or that no one even thinks about me. Um, it, it really damages our soul. And so today I want to share with you this thought from Psalm 139, because this is your psalm if you ever have felt that way at all. Listen to what the psalmist writes here. He says, O Lord, you have searched me and known me. You know when I sit down and when I rise up. You discern my thoughts from afar. You search out my path and my lying down and are acquainted with all my ways. Even before a word is on my tongue, behold, O Lord, you know it all together. You hem me in behind and before and lay your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is high. I cannot attain it. Where shall I go from your spirit? Or where shall I f flee from your presence? If I ascend to heaven... You're there. If I make my bed in Sheol, which is the place of the dead, hell, literally, you are there. If I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the uttermost parts of the sea, even there your hand shall lead me and your right hand shall hold me. If I say, surely the darkness will cover me and the light about me be night, even the darkness is not dark to you. The night is bright as the day, for darkness is as light with you. Isn't that amazing? Uh, I want you to know that God is with you. He is with you everywhere you go. God is there. Even when you run away from him or try to hide from him, God is with you. He doesn't ever abandon you. He doesn't ever leave you. Look, if you've experienced that life-changing relationship with Jesus Christ, then the God of all creation is with you always. He's actually put his Holy Spirit in you and you can't get away from him. He's that voice that's nagging you about returning to God, returning to church, obeying God. He's convicting you of sin. He's with you always. And not only is God with you, but God thinks of you. Did you catch that? In verse 2, he says, You know when I sit down and when I rise up, you discern my thoughts from afar. Or how about verses 17 and 18? I didn't read those yet. He, he says, How precious to me are your thoughts, O God. How vast is the sum of them. If I would count them, they are more than the sand. Okay, do you get the picture? God is thinking about you more often than there are grains of sand on the seashore. That means you're on the, the mind of God. He's with you. He's thinking of you. And did you catch that? He's, he's leading you. Not only is God always with you, not only is God always thinking about you, but he's actually leading you. Verse 10, even there your hand shall lead me and your right hand shall hold me. Wow. So everyone else can forget about you. Everyone else can abandon you, but not God. God's not going to abandon you. He's not going to leave you. He's not going to forget you because you're always on his mind. You're always on his heart. He's always with you and he's always leading you. 
Now let these truths just sink in for a moment. Just, just kind of relish them. Let them settle your heart. The God of all creation knows you intimately. And he loves you. And he's demonstrated that love in this. While we were sinners, Christ died for us. So God knows you and God loves you. And God is with you and God thinks about you. And God is leading you. Two questions to wrap up this devotion. First of, is this, do you believe these truths? Do you believe them? Do you believe that God really knows you and loves you and is with you and, and, and thinks about you? Let, let that settle in because just because other people forget us doesn't mean that God does. So do you believe this? And, and if the answer is yes, yes, I believe that God knows me and loves me and is with me and, and he's thinking of me and he's leading me, then the second question is this. Are you following him? Are you following him? Because if God is leading you, he's leading you somewhere and to do something. Where is God leading you? Is he leading you back into fellowship? Is he leading you to serve somebody? Is he leading you to forgive somebody? And what is God leading you to do? Are you sup supposed to be that influence on that person at work? Are you supposed to be that influence on that, that student at school? Are you supposed to be that influence on your family? By loving, by forgiving, by serving, by practicing generosity. What is it that God wants you to do? Because if he knows us, and he does, and he's with us, and he always is, and he's thinking about us, He's also leading us. My challenge to you this morning is, will you obey God? Will you say yes to him? And will you do what he asks and go where he leads? Because if you do that, you're going to be blessed. And I'm praying that you have a blessed day.